Hi all, this is Tanishka from Ideaweka and I welcome you all to this session. Today I am here with a new topic that is Azure Data Lake Storage. So let's quickly have a glance on today's agenda. Today we'll be discussing about Azure Data Lake Storage. Next, we'll learn how to create Azure Data Lake Storage. Later, we'll see the comparison between the Azure Blob Storage and Data Lake Storage. And at last, we look on to the sum of the use cases. Azure Data Lake Storage. So what is Azure Data Lake Storage? Azure Data Lake Storage is a repository that stores large amount of raw data in its natural format until it is needed for analytics application. So why is it named as Data Lake? Well, James Dixon, the Chief Technology Officer of Pentaho, is the person who has generally been credited with the coining of the term data lake. According to him, he described a data mart that is a subset of a data warehouse as akin to a bottle of water, which is cleansed, packaged, and structured for easy consumption. While a data lake is more likely a body of water in its natural states, data flows from the streams, that is the source of the system, to the lake. Users have access to lake to examine, take samples, or dive in. So, a data lake is a centralized repository designed to store, process, and secure large amount of structured, semi-structured, and unstructured data. It can store data in its native format and process any variety of it, ignoring the size limits. Next is how to create a data lake storage. For this, we'll have a practical demo to have a better understanding. So the first step to work on any Azure services is to first sign in. So first we need to sign in. Make sure you do have an Azure account so that you can have the access to different Azure services. So let's sign in. Stay signed in. So once you sign in, you enter to this dashboard. So you can see here, this is a dashboard of your account and you can see different kinds of Azure services like storage accounts, monitors, virtual machine, resource group, SQL database, SQL managed instances. And also you can see your subscriptions and different types of resource group you have created and all other stuff. So let's quickly get started. First, we need to go to create a resource. So once you come here, you can see popular Azure services. So like virtual machine, Kubernetes services, Cosmos DB, and rest of them. So for us, we need to go to storage account. Once you click here, so you enter to create a storage account. Here, we need to create a resource group. So first of all, what do you mean by resource group? A resource group is a container that holds related resources for an Azure solution. It can include all these resources for the solution or only those resources that you want to manage as a group. So let's create a new resource group. Let's name it as demo data lake one. Okay. And once you create a resource group, so you come to a storage account name. So a storage account contains all of your Azure storage data objects, including blobs, file shares, queues, tables, and disks. So let's name it as Marshmallow123. So once you have named your storage account, we go to the advanced section. Here, we will directly move to Data Lake Storage Generation 2. So what do you mean by Data Lake Storage Generation 2? Data Lake Storage Generation 2 is designed to deal with this variety and volume of data at exhibit scale while securely handling hundreds of gigabytes of true output. With this, you can use Data Lake Storage Generation 2 on the basis of both real-time and batch solution. So here we will enable the hierarchical namespace. Once we enable it, we'll click on Review Plus Create. So it will take few minutes to validate all your details. Once validation is passed, you just click on create. So it's now getting ready to deploy. 
So here you can see your marshmallow one, two, three is created and now it is getting ready for deployment. Here you can see deployment is in progress. Once it gets ready, so we will be working on it. Here you can see your deployment is complete. Now what you are going to do is we'll move on to go to resources. Now here you can see your details, your resource group details, the whole storage account details basically. And even you can see the properties enabled with it. So here we have data lake storage, file service, queue service, table service, networking, security. So after this, we'll quickly go to containers and we'll create a new container for our storage account. So let's click on container and we give it a name to it. Make sure you give a name. It should be in lowercase because they don't accept the uppercase. So let's keep it demo and create. So yeah, you can see your container has been created. Let's click on it. So here you can see there are no results as we haven't added any stuff. So let's upload. For this, you can either upload it from Azure portal or else you can also go to Storage Explorer. So let's see how do we do on the Azure portal. So once you come here, you can just click on select a file. Let's take any picture. Let's see, we'll upload a picture. So here you can see aws3.png. Let's upload it. So yeah, you can see AWS PNG has been uploaded in your container. Same as we can do on Storage Explorer 2. For that, you need to download a Storage Explorer. In my case, I have already downloaded the Storage Explorer. So let's quickly go into it. So here also make sure you are signed in so that you can see all your containers and resource group which you have created. So here you can see my storage account that is Marshmallow123 which we have created recently. Under this, we'll go and find our container. Yeah, so here we go to block containers and we can see our demo. So here you can see the image file which we had uploaded through our Azure portal. Now we'll upload a file and a folder both. Let's see. So let's upload a file first. So you click on upload, upload files, and then you select a file. Let's take any file. Let's take a picture again. So AWS code. Let's take this an image. So now here you can see your image is transferring from your path to our demo. Yeah. So here your image file is uploaded. So as we said, we can upload any kind of data, maybe structured or unstructured. So let's check out by uploading a folder. So here you go with the same process and you, you select your folder. Let's take any folders. Let's see if we do have any folder. Okay, I'll just take any one of my folders and just check and upload. So your folder is also being uploaded over here. And once your folder is uploaded, now you can see the inside resources into it. So here, there were different files, text, image, all of them are there. You can access it from here itself. And you can see other operations as well. If you want to download any of the file or folder, you can do it. Or if you want to open it, let's open it in any of the uh, files. See, let's see if it is getting open or no. Okay, yes. So yeah, you can see this file has been opened. Now, if you want to download this file, let's download sequence. So we'll download it and just put it in downloads. Let's see if it is downloaded or no. Apply to apply. So yeah, it tells your download is completed. Let's see if you find it or no. 
we go to our file and downloads and here see now i had downloaded this is the file which i had downloaded through our storage explorer so this is how you manage your data through azure data lake storage so apart from this you can also give permissions to different users like whichever file if you want to give an access to a particular user then you can also give permission to them that they can either read write and access the whole file or a folder so for that you just need to click on a file or a folder and right click and you just see here manage access control list so once you come here so you can here you can see there are different owners super user owner and all so here i can add an owner like for this file who can just get an access to it so you can find out any name if you find out any relatable person or a user then you can give an access to that currently i don't have anyone so i won't be able to show you that but yes this is how you add or give permission to different users you can also do it with a folder or else you can also do it with the whole container as well if you want to share your containers with different people or different users then you can easily share them so here also you just go right click and just come to manage access control and just give them the access click on add and find out the person whom you want to give the access to and just after that once you give them the permission here you can see if you want to permit them for only read or only write or if you want to give read and write or all of the three so you can just give them the permissions accordingly and click on okay and then the particular user gets the access to all your files and folders so this is how we create and work with azure data lake storage now let us see the comparison between azure blob storage and the data lake storage so here are some of the comparisons between azure data lake storage and azure blob storage azure data lake storage is a technique of planning and control of the time whereas azure blob storage is an object store with a flat namespace azure data lake is an optimized storage for big data analytics workload whereas azure blob storage is basically a general purpose object store for a wide variety of storage scenarios which also include big data analytics in azure data lake storage the apis are over https only whereas in blob storage the rest api is over the http as well as the https in azure data lake storage there is no limits on the account but in azure blob storage there are specific limits for container sizes and the files in the blob so this were the major points which differentiate azure blob storage with azure data lake storage at last we come to the use cases there are many use cases of data lake storage out of which we will discuss about four so at first business intelligence on data lake storage so data lake storage dramatically improves the speed for ad hoc queries dashboards and remotes you can run existing bi tools on lower cost data lakes without compromising performance or data quality it also avoids costly delays adding new data sources and the reports at second we see cloud data lake migration here we can optionally deploy new applications to the cloud using data lake storage such as s3 or adls you can also migrate from older on prem data lake environments that are expensive and difficult to maintain while ensuring agility and flexibility next data science on the data lake storage here you can accelerate data science on data lake storage with simplified data exploration and feature engineering dramatically it improves performance making data scientists and engineers more efficient resulting in high quality analytical models at last data architecture modernization so here you can avoid reliance on proprietary data warehouse infrastructure and the need to manage the cubes abstract and aggregation tables you can run operational data warehouse queries on low cost data lakes 
offloading the data warehouse at your own pace. So this was all about Azure Data Lake Storage. I hope you enjoyed the session and might have got a clear picture about Azure Data Lake Storage. Happy learning.